Hello, good day, and welcome back. Um, so today we're gonna continue, like in the previous video, learning more about Angular through um, the enhancements of our, or by enhancing our uh, web simple web applic um, to do application web application. So what we're gonna do in this video is try and clean up some of the things that I left in the last video. So that was uh, at the end of the last video. I said, hey. Let's put a simple checkbox that when you click it, it marks a task as completed and then it should, you know, prevent you from unchecking that task unless you, of course, edit it. So that doesn't go away. And there was a little annoying thing through of um, when you try, you select a task to edit and you change the status or the title, basically anything for it. It actually updated inside of the list. And that was kind of annoying because it means that if you decide to cancel or something, uh, you know, you basically committed those changes and you couldn't cancel it. So that's easy to fix. And then what I wanted to do was um, do something like filtering. Um, so we can, if we have a long list of tasks, maybe the completed tasks, we don't want to see them. And so we could filter or maybe we might want to search for a task. And so that's going to allow us to just see, uh, you know, find tasks quickly. The other thing we might want to do is see a count of how many tasks we have completed. So the way, again, if it's a long list, we don't have to count through it. Um, so you might want to count how many you have completed or how many you have uncompleted. I'm going to do completed, but it's just easy for you to change it once you see how that's done. So that's the setup. And so not too many slides to go through. There are no more slides to go through. So let's just start looking at what we're trying to do. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the same code we had from before, but except I'm going to take the JavaScript we have in the HTML because our page is getting pretty long here. The file is getting long. I'll put it in an external file. And then I'll just update the um, script tag to point to an external source file, which I'm going to call app.js. And so that's just going to make the individual file we modify easier to deal with in, ten, in terms of not having to scroll a whole lot. So that's about it. So this is pretty easy and that's it, done. So now that we have that sorted out, the next thing I wanna do is um, complete the homework, in whatever assignment that I left undone the last time. And that is, I wanna make this button work that when you click um, the check mark, um, it should check, um, set the task as completed. So that's, again, fairly easy so I'm gonna speed up here to kind of show it so that this video is not as long but all the source course is there and it's the same thing we were doing before with the whole edit and update and remove it's basically the same idea as you can guess that um, to set it complete is just finding the particular task and setting the status value changing the status value so again that is pretty easy okay so now that we have the button, so when you click it, it um, sets something as completed. But um, notice that we don't modify, we don't, we're not tied to the model of the button so that um, if, because um, we're just doing an ng click to initiate an action. But what we want is just change the status of the button so that uh, you can't click it again. As we said before, it, once it's clicked and the status is checked, you can uncheck it. Um, the completion because you wouldn't know which one to go if it's to not start it or to um, put it at in progress. So we're gonna disable the button if it's com once it's marked as completed. Uh, the other thing I like to do so that's gonna be ND di and G disable use that to disable um, something once it's marked as completed. Um, the other thing I want to be able to do is um, if I edit something and its status is completed, then it should be, the button should, um, should be checked, but if it's not completed, then it should be unchecked. So I have to type the, the model, um, update the model of the button. And so um, the, the, the thing that you want to bind to is um, not ng selected, as you may think that you have a, this checkbox that's selected, but it's the ng check. And so you'll see that I'll try to bind to ng to the selected, it's not gonna work and instead I wanna bind to check. Um, just as we demonstrated when we started learning about Angular um, in the very first video, I was binding to 
the ng model to the checkbox and it was working fine right we could toggle the checkbox and we see true or false so i could have done the exact same thing here i just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce yet another ng directive um the ng checked okay so feel free to use ng model or ng check and it will work the exact same way one thing that's um, no painful and i kind of regret is now that i've separated my html and javascript when i want to um, make a new example i have to copy two files and then make an edit but you know whatever that is that's fine so i'm going to make a second file here and what i'm going to try to address now is the issue we had when you try to update the title or status or even something you select for edit it would be updated in the list and the solution is pretty simple what we really want is to make a new object with all the fields that we can use for editing and only when you press edit then you save that you replace the old object so that is essentially the goal and so the question then is how do you do that easily you know you can simply make a new object and you know copy each individual field but then you have more code to type every single time you add something new to your task and so some new uh, property so angular provides you a convenient method to do this so we're gonna look up the Angular copy method and it's pretty easy to use. Uh, you can look at the documentation here, but I'll just speed up a little bit and show you how I use it and how it solves our problem. You can see um, the change is pretty simple and um, very straightforward. Again, like I said, make a copy. And once I go back to my co um, the application and I make a change, um, you can see it doesn't update in place in the list until I click the update button and that's exactly what we want and it worked that way when we had we were just doing the text field because we were passing a copy of the title only but now we are actually passing a reference to the entire object in our list and that's why it was working incorrectly and so this is what we want and it's pretty simple change one not a problem solved the one, one of the other things I want to do is be able to put a task completed um, and to show the number of completed tasks. Again, you could put, show the number of completed tasks, it doesn't matter. But how do I do that? Well, really, what we really want to do is take our list of tasks and filter it, right? Um, limit it. And we've done, um, seen something like this when we did um, look at the object in JavaScript. We saw that there are a number of methods like map and reduce and um, uh, and even filter so but angular also gives you a nice way of doing filters so if i just did a list that length that give me the length of my task but i don't want all of them i just want those that have been completed so again we're going to turn to angular and we're going to use the um, this feature angular has which is called filters and we've used filter before in our much earlier in the angular video when we did the date filter but we use it from inside our controller but you can actually use it from in the template and so it's pretty simple so you have a list your list or an array or an object and you put a pipe character and so if you go on the angular page and you scroll on your to filter you see date filter um, currency filters and there's one called filter and so here's your expression that you like to filter for us is the list and then we're going to pipe it through the filter name and then we're going to give it an expression that we want to filter and so you can read the documentation but here ours for us we just simply want to filter out only things create a new array with only objects that contain completed so let's just do that so let's type um, list pipe it to filter and then um, that new array will get the length of it and that's it that's and we could test it so you'll see it. that works Last thing I want to do is be able to put a search box. So if I have a number of tasks, a long list of tasks, I can search on the, you know, just search for, you know, a completed one or ones that contain a certain um, text in the title or even in the description. Now, this filter, that um, this particular filter here that you can use, so Angular is using it in two ways. There's a filter called filter and then this general idea of filters. Um, and as you can see, a date filter, a currency filter, whatever. But this particular filter here, uh, we've been using it to filter out the completed items to get a count of it. You can actually tell it which field you want to filter on. I'm not going to do that because I want to keep it flexible. So if I type completed, 
I can get all the completed tasks or in progress tasks or tasks that you know contain a certain text. So I'm going to put a text box just above the form and then I'm going to reuse this idea of, I'm going to use the filter feature and then just filter away. Um, pretty much the same exact same thing as we did before. And it's pretty nice, uh, again, how Angular make a lot of these things that would normally seem pretty complex very, very easy. And I'm going to use this Q string as my model um, variable, um, but you can use anything you like. As you can see after my um, change here, a uh, little bit of testing, um, I can filter on title, I can filter on the status, and you can see that though, um, you could play with it, but um, if Apple is um, completed and I look for S, then I don't see Apple, but if it's in, in progress or not started because those complete contains S, if I type S, then Apple is in the list. And all this is because I'm not filtering on any particular field. I'm just filtering across the entire object. So Angular just um, looks at each field and see, oh, does it contain whatever you, you type in? And if it does, then it let it pass through. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, um, I think that was pretty cool. Some of the things we were able to do, um, how we enhance our application. And... I sped up the video because uh, I didn't want you to sit around and spend 30 minutes just watching me type. So everything is in the code, the result, and you can certainly slow down or pause the video at any point if you think I went over something too quickly. And so I hope you appreciate me saving you about 16 minutes otherwise. And again, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and spread the word. Okay, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.